This video is about Kirchhoff's laws for circuits. There are two laws that we call Kirchhoff's laws, just a physicist who worked with circuits. The first law is the current law. For any junction in an electrical circuit, the sum of currents flowing into that junction is equal to the sum of the currents flowing out of that junction. The algebraic sum of currents meeting at a point is zero. So we write it like this. The sum of the currents I is equal to zero for any junction. And we consider current going into the junction to be positive and current to be going out negative. So as an example, if I have current one going into this junction and current two and three coming out, I would say that positive current one plus negative current two plus negative current three is equal to zero because current two and current three are coming out of the junction. So that would be the information that I would get about this junction from Kirchhoff's current law. The voltage law says that the sum of the voltages around any closed loop in a circuit is zero. So the sum of the voltages is equal to zero in a loop. If the loop points in the direction of current, the battery adds voltage and resistors subtract voltage. If the loop points in the opposite direction of current, the battery subtracts current and the resistors add current. So as an example here, we can say that this current is going this way. It's coming out of the positive end of the battery. And if I follow any one loop, if I follow any closed path around this circuit, Kirchhoff's voltage law is telling me that the total sum of the voltages along this path will be equal to zero. So that means that the total voltage from the battery minus the first voltage in the first resistor minus the second voltage in the second resistor, all three of those things together are equal to zero when you add them up. I can also look at this path and Kirchhoff's law is saying that this is also true that the voltages here also add together to make zero. So I can also write down this statement based on that information. There's also a third loop in this problem that occurs right here specifically. And I can see here that the current would be flowing against the direction that I'm observing the loop. The current would be flowing right through R2, but my loop is going to the left. So that would mean that I would actually consider that to be an addition of voltage rather than a subtraction of voltage in that resistor. So there I would say that negative voltage three plus voltage two is equal to zero. So those are three facts about that circuit that I could get from Kirchhoff's voltage law. There will be times when there will be multiple batteries in your circuit. It's actually possible for current to move the wrong way through a battery if it's receiving a strong enough push from another battery. When this happens, the backward battery's voltage in the loop is negative if you were following the direction of current. So if I'm following this direction of current, I would say that the voltage across the second battery is positive because the current is pointing in the right direction, but it's negative across voltage number one because the battery is pointing in the wrong direction. Its positive end is facing toward the current. The current is going into the positive end. And this part's a little confusing. I'm just gonna consider that voltage drop across R3 to be positive because I'm not actually sure which direction the current is going. So I'm just gonna consider that to be positive for now and work that out later. So I'm gonna consider this to be a counterclockwise loop and just say that V2 minus V1 plus V3 equals zero. I realize this is a little strange. I'm gonna give you a few examples later that will kind of clarify what I'm doing here. I could also say that the current goes in the other direction and this would be the resultant equation for that direction. These are the steps of using Kirchhoff's laws to solve an equation and solve for every single current, voltage, and resistance in a complex circuit. So I'm not gonna read these out, I'm just gonna follow these steps one step at a time for an example circuit problem. Okay, this is an example circuit problem where you actually have multiple batteries and two resistors and you wanna know the current in every single section of the circuit and you wanna know the resistance in every single part of the circuit as well. So to use Kirchhoff's laws, we're gonna start by labeling all the junctions, loops, and individual currents in the circuit. So I'm gonna give each of those junctions and each of those loops a name so that I can get information out of them. I can see that there are two junctions here, junction A and junction B. And there are three possible loops I can follow. This loop here, this loop here, and a total loop around the outside of the circuit. So I'm not gonna draw that third loop consistently. I also just kind of arbitrarily chose that both loops were going counterclockwise. If you wanted to call them clockwise, that's totally fine as well. That's not gonna matter so much. I'll show you why in a little while. I'm now gonna label the individual currents in the circuit. So we have some current, I'm just gonna call it I1 coming out of this battery here and also going into this battery here. The only time that current changes is when it's split up at a junction. So that's I1. And I kind of made up that direction for I1 because I don't know which way it's going because there's that other 18 volt battery. So it's totally possible that that battery is actually pushing current in the opposite direction through the three volt battery. I'm gonna show you later how to figure out the actual direction of the current, but you actually can't do that until after you solve Kirchhoff's laws problems. So I'll show you how to do that in a moment. 
So whenever a current hits a junction, it potentially splits up and becomes a different current. So after I1 goes through this junction, I'm gonna label this I2. And so that doesn't change as long as it's in the same wire. And then we're also gonna have I3 down here, which doesn't change until it gets to a junction. So I followed the first step. I've labeled all the junctions, loops, and individual currents in the circuit. Write the equations for the current and the voltage you can get from each junction and loop. Okay, so I'm gonna to start to write up the equations that I know from Kirchhoff's laws. So I know that for the junction rule for currents, the current going in must equal the currents going out, or they must add together to make zero. So because I1 is going into junction A and I2 and I3 are coming out of junction A, we consider I1 to be positive and I2 and I3 to be negative, and altogether they're adding to make zero. And at junction B, I can see that I2 plus I3 are going together with I1 to also make zero. You'll notice that those two are basically the same equation. I don't have this written down on the slide because it's honestly just gonna to be too wordy, but I do need you to copy this down in your notes. If two junctions yield the exact same equation, we would actually say they're both part of only one unique junction. So junction A and junction B, we would really only consider to be one unique junction. Those are just two different junctions that yield the same equation. So even though they're two junctions, they're really just one unique junction because they're yielding just one unique equation. Okay, so now I'm going to look at the equations I can get from the loops, and I remember that the sum of all the voltages across the loops is equal to zero. So I remember that the sum of all the voltage in a loop is equal to zero. So in loop one, I have three volts minus whatever voltage is in resistor one, and that's equal to zero. In loop two, I can see that the current is going in the opposite direction of the battery. So I'm going to call that a negative voltage there. And as I follow that loop around, I follow the current backwards, I number two, backwards through resistor number one. So because this loop is going in the opposite direction of the current through resistor number one, I would call that voltage positive. It's kind of like you're going backwards through the drop, so you're actually going up in voltage. Finally, as I continue that loop counterclockwise, I go through I3 through that second resistor there, and I can see that the current is flowing in the same direction as my loop, so I would consider that to be a negative voltage drop. So that's gonna be negative 18V plus V1 minus V2 is equal to zero. And then for loop three, the outer loop across the outer edge of the circuit, if I follow that along, I get 3V from that top battery minus V2 from the second resistor because that counterclockwise motion along the edge of the circuit is following the path of the current through R2. It's going in the same direction, so that's going to be a negative voltage drop. And then the current going through the battery is going in the wrong direction, so that's a negative 18 volt. And that's all that we have on the outside of that circuit, so altogether that's going to add to make zero. Step number three. We're now going to use V equals IR to replace voltages with currents and the resistors they're passing through. So the reason why we're doing this is we ultimately want to know the values of I1, I2, I3, and V1 and V2. That's the reason why we're setting this up. So I'm going to replace those loop rules with the specific resistances and the specific names of the currents going through each voltage, creating that voltage, because V is equal to IR. So each of those individual voltages are equal to the current going through that resistor times the resistance of that resistor. Step four, connect your equations using algebra to solve for each missing variable. So we now have these five equations, L1, L2, L3, and JA and JB. So I'm just gonna start to combine them and solve for any information that I can when I plug this in using algebra, I find that I2 is equal to 0 0.015 amps, I3 is equal to negative 0.0375 amps, and I1 is negative 0.0225 amps. So you can use algebra to find those by starting with L1 to find I2, and then plugging I2 into L2 to find I3, and then plugging I3 into either one of those junction equations to find I1. So now that I have these values of I, I can also calculate the voltage drop in each resistor. So the voltage in one is 3V, that's just I1 times R1. And the voltage drop across the second resistor is 15 volts, so that's gonna be I3 multiplied by the second current. Step number five is if you get a negative direction for a current, the actual direction of the current is the opposite of the direction that you chose. So that just means that we chose the wrong direction for I1 and I3 specifically because they're negative. And so to complete this problem, the actual directions of I1 and I3 point in the opposite direction, but I2 was correct. So I'm just gonna go through and flip the I1s. So now that's positive and flip the I3s. So that's positive. And this is now an exact map of the exact current voltage and resistance in every single part of the circuit that I was analyzing. So that's how you use Kirchhoff's laws following those five steps.